Hello, everyone. Welcome back. In this example, we're going to get a little bit more practice with uh, specifically rotations. Um, and we're going to do that by programming a simple analog clock. Okay? It's not going to be perfect, and it's going to be pretty bare bones, but uh, it is a good, uh, good exercise to really wrap your head around rotations, but also the effect of push and pop on the transformations. <clears throat> All right, so I've already started a sketch here, uh, just a basic sketch. And uh, we're going to kind of walk through the steps of how we would program a simple clock. Okay? We're going to go very minimalist here, and uh, we're going to draw basically the 12 uh, ticks around the clock, and then the three handles for the hour, minute, and seconds. And this clock will match uh, whatever time we have in our system time. So let's start by drawing the, uh, the ticks. Okay? So um, we know that we're probably going to want our clock to be centered inside our window. So having the origin up here at 0, 0 uh, in the top left corner, it's not very convenient uh, for this clock project. So we're going to start with a translate that's going to move the origin to the center of the canvas instead of the top left corner. So that would be translate width divided by 2 and height divided by 2. And then if I do this, and let's say draw a small rectangle at 0, 0 now, and um, let's see, this rectangle is going to be I don't know, like 20 by 10, okay? Here's a little rectangle. Maybe let's make it a little a little longer. Um, this is now being drawn at 0, 0, okay, which is over here. Now, let's add a, a rotate in this. Okay. <clears throat> so a rotate, if you recall, uh, takes an angle by default in radians. So before we move forward, I'm going to change the angle mode. I'm going to do it in setup because I just want to do that once for the whole program. Uh, I'm going to change that to degrees. Uh, the default is radians. We're going to work in degrees because it's a little easier. And uh, just to recap, right, if I put in a rotate after having translated my origin, right, the rotate always happen around the, um, the origin point. Or we could rotate by, let's say, mouse X, right? And then we could kind of interactively rotate this little um, this little rectangle. So we can kind of see that by default, rectangles are drawn with their top left corner attached to 0, 0. So this is how this rectangle is rotating. Uh, if we wanted this to be maybe a little bit nicer, we could change, now that we know that the origin is here, we could change the coordinates of this rectangle. For example, if we draw it up a little bit, right? by like half of its height, <clears throat> you can see now I'm kind of centering how it's rotating a little bit better. So this is zero, zero point is now kind of in the middle of this edge of the rectangle. Okay. So rotate allows us to rotate around the origin. Uh, if we translate after we rotate, right? Let's say I translate by some amount along the Y axis, okay, we're going to get behavior that looks like this. So if we don't rotate, we end up like this, right? But then um, <clears throat> if, so I've translated from the center, but because we rotate first, right? This allows us to kind of project the object further away from the center of rotation, wherever that was when we rotated, which in this case is the center of our screen. So we could apply this concept here to draw a sequence of, uh, of lines that are going to be the tick marks for our clock. Right? <clears throat> So the amount of translation here that we're going to apply is effectively going to become the radius of our clock. Okay, so we could define that as a, as a variable here. Let's call this uh, radius. Okay, so we're going to say the radius of the clock, maybe it's going to be a third of the width of the window. So we're going to translate by radius. It's about right, kind of fills the window pretty well. And uh, now we need a little bit, a little bit of code that's going to go and essentially start at you know zero over here and then draw the twelve ticks um, all the way around the circle. Okay, so this is a great job for a for loop. So instead of using this kind of rotate mouse X here, uh, we are going to rotate by some angle, and we are going to let the code figure out how much rotation we need to apply in order to draw all twelve ticks. <clears throat> so we know we have twelve ticks, so we're going to write a for loop that repeats. 12 times. Okay? Uh, we're going to create a counter called i, and then we're going to loop as long as i is less than 12, and we're going to do increments of 1. Okay? And every time we do, we are going to uh, calculate right, how much we need to be rotating 
uh, what's the angle of each individual ticks around uh, around the the clock <clears throat> so let's create a variable called angle uh, so this is a good job for map okay we can say okay let's map our counter which we know goes from um, it's going to go from 0 to 12 well technically 0 to 11 but here I'll explain why I'm using 12 here in a second uh, and let's map this to a number between 0 and 360 and then uh, we're going to apply this angle of rotation. And then we're going to translate and then draw our little rectangle. Okay. So let's see what that looks like. Oh dear, that's kind of a mess. Interesting. <clears throat> so we have the angle right, but one thing we have to pay attention to is also the fact that transformations stack on top of each other. Okay, so if we have a for loop here that's going to repeat this code, this is rotating the origin, then translating, then rotating again from where we translated, right? Then translating from there and so forth. So this is how we end up with this trail of, of ticks and they become way off screen after a while. So we're gonna use push and pop inside the for loop right? to make sure that in this case, I don't want these transformations to stack, right? I want to rotate and then translate and then go back to the next tick and have a clean slate where the only transformation that will apply is the one I did up here, which moved the origin to the center of my window. Okay, that looks more like it. So now we have a for loop that's drawing these 12 ticks and at each step of the way, it's calculating the correct angle in order to position all the ticks. Okay. Now notice I didn't go to, um, I did not go to 11 here, which we would no normally would have done with map. If I did this, this would have implied that the, the 12th tick, which is this one, would have had 360 degrees as its rotation, which puts it right on top of the first one we drew. So instead, I'm kind of cheating here a little bit, but map doesn't care. So I'm saying, well, pretend we have 12 position, but in fact, I'm only going up to 11 in here, right? Knowing that my last position would be 360, which means now the 11th one is in the correct spot. Otherwise, I would have to figure out what is the last uh, degree here that I would want to see for the, the last angle I would want to have for the uh, this tick, right? If I went to 11, we change this here. We'll see that now we don't have the correct number of ticks because the, the last one overlaps with the first one. So either we fix the amount in degrees here, which I don't really feel like calculating, right? It's probably um, 360 divided by 12 times 11. That would be technically, I think, the correct thing to do. Um, but instead of doing that, we can be lazy and we'll just pretend this goes to 12 when in fact it only will go to 11 in practice and we get the same result. Okay, so map can be very flexible in that way. All right, <clears throat> so that gives us the, the ticks of our clock. Okay. Now let's talk about drawing the handles. So let's start with the hour um, handle, or maybe actually we'll start with the, the seconds, okay? Because that one will move the, the fastest. So if we were to draw a handle for the seconds, maybe we'll draw a, a thin um, rectangular line here, okay? A rectangle. So we'll do a, a small rectangle, let's say at zero, zero. Uh, this is gonna have the full radius of our um, the clock, and uh, it's only gonna be four pixels high. And when I draw it, I'm going to shift it up by two pixels so that its uh, edge is centered. Okay. So this is my um, <clears throat> this is going to be my seconds okay, um, hand. And now what I need to do is figure out the correct rotation for it so that it follows the time of, on my computer. So let's open the reference real quick. We have access in P5 to some functions that allow us to deal with uh, time. I'm going to search for time here uh, in the time and date section. Uh, so we have a, a day, hour, minute, uh, second, and month function. So all five of these refer to kind of the system clock. And we can use them to know what hour it is, what minute it is, what second it is on the clock. Uh, the other function that is available here is a function called millis, and millis is a little bit different. Uh, millis is more of a like a timer that starts when the program begins and then returns the amount of time in milliseconds since we hit play, since we started the code. So this is not as helpful to us for a clock, but the other ones are. So for example, the second function here would give us um, whatever second we are around the clock. 
<clears throat> so before we draw a rectangle, we could say, let's figure out um, the second angle. Okay. So we could map the value we get from second. And uh, this is something I, I want to point out as well, because I don't think we've done this before. Uh, we don't have to put the outcome of a function into a variable before we can pass it to another function. So here uh, I could just say second, right? And this, this spits out a number. So that can become the input to the map function. Okay? Uh, I could have said, you know, I could have done this, put it into a separate variable, and then uh, here put in the variable s. Okay? So that would have the same effect. Um, but I could also just cut to the chase and put the second function here as the first parameter. So that's something we can do in JavaScript. Uh, anything that returns a value can be used in, um, in place of a value itself. So we're going to map the seconds. Now seconds go from 0 to 60, right? We're going to map this to 0 and 360, which is a full rotation around our um, circle. <clears throat> and then we are going to rotate by that angle. And we are going to get something like this. <clears throat> Now, one thing we have to keep in mind here, and this is not going to be super obvious for the second handles, but uh, in the rotation world of P5, the zero angle is, is, is flat. Okay? It starts over here. Uh, so when we have a zero, it means the, the handle is going to be flat. And then we rotate from there, and then 360 goes back here. This is not the way a clock is set up, right? The clock kind of starts from the top over here. So it's not obvious with the seconds, but as soon as we throw in the minutes and um, the hour, it's going to become obvious that we're going to have the wrong time. So how do we counter this? Well, simply what we could do is once we figured out the right angle for our uh, handle that we're about to draw, we're simply going to add to that a constant minus 90 degree rotation to shift everything up to the correct alignment so that it matches the way a clock is structured. So once we have our second angle, we are going to subtract from it 90 degrees. Okay? So minus 90 moves 0 over here. And this is where the clock starts. <clears throat> All right. So let's now uh, do the minutes. Okay? So we're going to say minute angle. We're going to map the minute value from the clock, which also goes from 0 to 60. We're going to map it to a number between 0 and 360. That's an angle. And we're going to subtract 90 degrees from that to bring the zero point at the top, not at 3 o'clock over here. Um, then we are going to rotate the minute angle. And then we are going to draw another line here, um, another rectangle. This one, let's make it a little um, larger than the other one. Okay, so just, uh, they appear a little bit different. <clears throat> and uh, same, same thing with the radius. We're going to make it the same length. Or maybe we're going to make it that's divided by one and a half. Okay. Let's hit play and see what that looks like. Okay, okay. so now um, it looked like we started correct, but you notice that my minute handle is being is rotating at the same rate as my seconds handle. Why is that? Well, if you're paying attention, remember transformations stack with each other. Okay. So if I rotate here and then rotate again, this second box is affected by the first box rotation. So what do we do to counter that? Well, we have push and pop, right? So we can say before we draw the second handle, let's use push to save things, make sure we save the origin uh, that's in the middle and with no other transformation applied so that the minutes uh, handle is not affected. So that's more like it. <clears throat> so where it's... Uh, 37, oh, that looks about right. And um, we can kind of preemptively do the same thing around the minutes handle as well. So we're going to do push and pop, uh, knowing that we're about to add the hour handle to this clock. So let's copy and paste this section, and let's finish our clock by adding the hours. Now the hours, um, we're just going to rename this variable to hour angle. We're going to use the hour function instead. Now, the R function is interesting because uh, it gives us a, according to the documentation, it gives us a value from 0 to 23, okay? which is fine. Um, but the clock, the analog clock, goes from 0 to 12, right? as you know, and then wraps around. So how do we deal with this? Well, here we could simply say 
uh, our clock goes from 0 to 12. And if the hour function provides a value that is greater than 12, map is still going to work. It's simply going to basically do the wrapping around behavior that we would expect. So it's not going to truncate the values that are smaller or larger. It's going to continue to do the mapping uh, math, uh, even if you go beyond the boundaries. It's going to just maintain the same rate of change. So even though the input here in this case is going to be from 0 to 23, we can set map up to expect a number from 0 to 12, knowing that this is going to give us the correct angle. And then we're going to change the rotate to our angle. And uh, let's make this one shorter and uh, a little stubbier than the others. Okay. Cool. All right. So let's take a quick recap here. Uh, so this clock exercise, if you can wrap your head around it, it's a great way to get a handle, no pun intended, on rotations in P5, right? Um, <clears throat> so we start with a translate. We bring our origin to the center of the clock. Right? Then we have a little for loop that repeats and draws all 12 ticks around the clock, right? using map to calculate how much of an angle each tick re requires right? based on the counter. And then to, in order to draw each tick, right, we um, rotate the canvas and then we translate away from the um, wherever the origin is, which is the center, by the radius of our clock. Okay, so this allows us to draw these rotated but also translated lines kind of coming away from this origin over here. Uh, then once we've done this and we use push and pop in here to make sure they don't affect each other or anything else that comes after, uh, we simply have a bit of code that draws the handles of the clock as three boxes that we rotate according to the time, the system time on our computer. And we also use map to figure out the correct angles. Um, and again, at each time, uh, we use push and pop to make sure the rotation of each angle doesn't affect the others because they're completely independent. All right. <clears throat> Uh, so this was our clock example. Uh, if you're interested, you know, you could play with this. Obviously, you could create a much more interesting clock uh, that's not as literal using these uh, second, minute, and hour functions. Um, but uh, the goal here is really to get a handle on rotation. <clears throat> so we'll leave it at that for this example. Uh, in the next one, we're, go we're going to do a simple little drawing tool that's going to rely on scale in order to create a mirror effect. So I will see you there.